Bitcoin continues its bullish momentum, hitting $42,000. What happens next? Because we see retail is being lured in by mainstream media. Will the pump continue and will there be a big correction after that? We also have Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and the XRP Army being highlighted for their victory over the SEC. And Elizabeth Warren is going to be in trouble because we have a former SEC official calling out that Hamas was using equities and ETFs to fund your operations, not what Elizabeth Warren was saying about crypto. So let's break this down and much more. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, Bitcoin hit $42,000, went on just a bit over 42 actually. And right now, slight pullback, which is normal, right? These things are normal. It's currently sitting at 41000 $651. Ethereum is at $2,226. BNB at $231. XRP at $0.61. Cents. Solana at $60. So we are waiting for Bitcoin's next move. And I think that's another leg up. I think retail is going to start coming in. We got the mainstream media covering crypto saying Bitcoin's pumping and the ETFs are coming. There's been ridiculous price points that are being put out by different folks. Some calling for $500,000 Bitcoin. So we've seen this show before. I've been here since 2016, folks. And what am I expecting? I'm expecting a move to 48K. That, that'll be the 618 on the Fibonacci uh, model here, similar to what it did in 2019. And then I think a correction happens there. I think Bitcoin goes down to about 30K. And at, at that point, I'll be buying back in <laughs> and uh, waiting for the new all-time highs, which I think are coming in 2025. Look, I'm here to make money. I don't care about being right and who gets the credit. I just want to make money. So I'm going to take profits off the table, walk away with money, and then I'm not selling all my crypto. I'm taking some. And then as we head to new all-time highs, I cash out at the euphoria phase. So folks, expect to see Bitcoin in the mainstream media and your Uber drivers and this family and that family talking to you about it and, and looking to invest. Am I personally buying right now? No, folks, I bought at 17K, 18K, 19K, 20K, right? Same thing with all coins. I bought the blood on the streets and have been patiently waiting. When you become financially educated, you are buying the fear, the blood on the streets, the dips. You are buying when the herd does not want to, right? You're not buying when there's pumps and when there's euphoria and mainstream uh, coverage. That's the time to be selling. So uh, that's how I'm approaching it. If you just got in the market, well, be patient. Maybe wait for the correction. I personally would not be buying this, but look, I'm not a financial advisor. Do what you want to do. Um, and you should probably talk to a financial advisor, but I'm just telling you what I'm doing and what I've seen this market do prior and what I'm anticipating now. Now, interestingly enough, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, uh, he tweeted out today to all his haters saying El Salvador's Bitcoin investments are in the black after literally thousands of articles and hit pieces that ridiculed our supposed losses all of which are calculated based on Bitcoin's market price at a time. With current Bitcoin market price, if we were to sell our Bitcoin, we would not only recover 100% of our investment, but also make a profit of $3,620,277.13 as of this moment. Of course, we have no intention of selling. That has never been our objective. We are fully aware that the price will continue to fluctuate in the future. This doesn't affect our long-term strategy. Nonetheless, it is important that the naysayers and the authors of those hit pieces take back their statements. The responsible thing to do would be for them to issue retractions, offer apologies, or at the very least acknowledge that El Salvador is now yielding a profit, just as they repeatedly reported that we were incurring losses. If they consider themselves true journalists, they should report this reality with the same intensity they reported the previous one. Well, we'll see. Stay tuned. So we know the haters, they're not going to retract anything. This is why... I, I keep mentioning financially educated, understand the market cycles, understand the charts, skip a Netflix show, skip watching TV or playing video games and take the 10 to 20 hours to research this, understand it, grasp it for yourself. 
that's what I had to do. And look, I'd spend more than 20 hours, right? But if you want to make money, you can't follow the herd. You can't just say, oh, the price is up. Let me go buy. That's not how to invest, right? That's not how Warren Buffett invests. That's not how the great investors invest. You have to uh, take the time, research, understand what's happening, and take a position when the prices are low. And you have to study the charts to understand that. Now, today, we also saw multiple Bitcoin spot ETF applicants update their uh, S1 prospectus and submit it to the SEC, BlackRock, Bitwise, and uh, quite a few folks. So interesting moves happening here, folks. The gears are still moving this thing is uh, moving forward. And here's what Anthony Pompliano had to say. He said, the Bitcoin ETF issuers are updating their applications so fast that you have to think they are all preparing for an approval at the same time that will kick off one of the most insane marketing blitzes in financial markets history as these large firms compete for billions in assets under management. He's absolutely right, folks. I do believe, though, once it's announced that the Bitcoin spot ETFs are approved, that will be a sell the news uh, event. So buy the rumor, sell the news. That doesn't mean Bitcoin's crashing up to 12K or going to zero. Correction. But the marketing doesn't happen overnight. And once they get approved, they're going to have to get their logistics in order. I'm sure they're prepping for that. But once you get the approval, they got to get the pipeline going and grease the wheels and all that, right? Then marketing will not happen overnight or in one week. It's going to have to ramp up. So understand there's a timeline and a process to this. But once that marketing gets going, it, Pomp is right. And it dovetails with the rise of Bitcoin's value and price in the bull market, along with all coins. So uh, I think... Everybody recognizes that, but you have to understand the nuances of this and how the marketing will play out in the business aspect as well. So Coindesk put out uh, their most influential list, uh, 2023 version, and Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse was uh, on that list. Uh, they said here, Ripple co-founder Brad Garlinghouse emerged triumphant this year in legal cases with big implications for crypto's future. He couldn't have done it without the XRP army. So Absolutely. And as John Deaton, attorney John Deaton would say, it's decentralized justice. And the Ripple case uh, sets the precedent for many of the crypto assets in the space, specifically all coins. They can use this case law in their defense. So this was a big win for the crypto industry. And Coindesk did a full write up here, but that's the TLDR. I'm not going to read through everything. Uh, we, we've covered the Ripple lawsuit and the victory over the SEC and much more. And, uh, you know, we'll see if there's some sort of settlement. It'll be amazing if there's a settlement coming soon. Uh, I think that would be super bullish for the altcoins out there. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great platform. I've been using them since 2018. I trust this platform. I can vouch for them. They have proof of reserves, so you can review their audits. They don't lend out or commingle your funds and all that nonsense. Um, they have 260 plus cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and all the top altcoins, XRP, Cardano, and so forth. You can also trade precious metals on this platform. They have a great app. And once again, folks, they are secure. So I want to highlight that because that's important. We don't want people to lose their funds. We don't want another FTX. So this platform has proof of reserve. You can go check it out. They have full transparency. Um, and once again, I've been using it for a long time. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, something very interesting came out today, folks, and it's coming from former commissioner SEC uh, Robert Jackson, who suggests that Hamas functionally engaged in insider trading of Israel equities alongside its October 7th attack, yielding its billions of dollars in profits. Hamas's annual military budget is about $350 million. So this breaks down Elizabeth Warren's nonsense lies, which we know are lies, right? She was working with the Wall Street Journal. They put out a whole bunch of lies, trying to paint it as though Hamas was only using crypto, right? Crypto caused Hamas to do these things, right? That's what she's trying to do. But she's corrupt. She's a liar. And we saw they did her and the Wall Street Journal. Well, the Wall Street Journal did a small retract, but she, of course, didn't apologize or retract anything. She sent that stupid letter full with misinformation and inaccuracies. But here, the, the bad actors, as we've been talking about, they use any medium to fund their activities. It's not the currency or the asset. It is the bad actors. You have to stop them. Before crypto, people were doing money laundering. Guess what? People were doing all kinds of bad things, right? 
is just whatever they use. They could use gold. They could anything. They will use anything. So you have to stop the bad actor. So I'm sharing this because you will see headlines. You will see sensationalism, and you will see Elizabeth Warren. Uh, you know, she's working with Wall Street Journal and all these things, and they collaborate on these lies, folks. So we are in a battle. The TradFi, many of the TradFi folks don't like crypto and they want to slow it down and kill crypto startups so they can come in and take over. And Elizabeth Warren, of course, has her gimp on a leash, Gary Genser, who's attacking the industry. So uh, here's what Ryan Selkis had to say about this uh, issue. He said, Hamas manipulated the stock market in order to funnel billions of dollars of insider trading profits to its militants. We must shut down the global stock market, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Anything less is terrorist sympathizing. So, <laughs> uh, you know, Ryan often goes after Senator Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler. I love it. Anyway, you know, uh, crypto will outlast these clowns, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler, even that clown Brad Sherman. Um, anyway, let's move ahead. We got bullish news to talk about. Asset manager Arbidin, uh, crypto exchange Arkchax Strive, if I'm saying that right, Arkchax, yeah, uh, for pole position in race to tokenize TradFi. So these two folks work with the Hedera network. So I'm bullish on HBAR. I have it in my portfolio. But tokenization, in addition to ETFs and these things, are what a lot of these uh, big institutions are looking at. They're looking to put stocks and all the traditional assets on the blockchain, fractionalize it, and have global 24-7 trading. I've said it many times, the stock market will not exist in the future, folks. There, there's not going to be an opening and close bell. It's not going to be a U.S. stock market. This thing is going to be a global market, folks. Uh, that's what's coming. It's going to take time, but the blockchain is the game changer here, folks. There's no more, oh, I'm going to ring the bell at 9.30 a.m. Eastern and then close at 5 and whatever. No, markets will keep going, just like crypto, right? It's 24-7 trading real-time. Uh, you can see real-time data, and you can verify it because it's on the blockchain. Now, crypto.com, which is a platform to trade crypto, like it's an exchange and so forth, they have been authorized as an electronic money institution in the UK, and they intend to offer e-money products. We're seeing global expansion of crypto companies. There's a global race. Competition's heating up. Everybody wants their slice of the pie and the biggest slice of that pie, of course. So it's great to see competitions healthy for consumers and, and, and users. And uh, everybody's in the race because they know what's coming. Uh, very, very big news here for crypto.com. Now, Standard Chartered Back Zodiac Custody is joining a global bank grade crypto safekeeping network led by Ripple owned Medico. So this is interesting. Um, the new sub custody network is designed to give institutions around the world easy access to safe crypto storage and settlement. Folks, is it designed for the average Joe and Jane? No, institutions, institutions who have a lot of money, a lot of wealth, folks. Uh, I hope you see what's happening here. And a lot of these companies and things are connected to big banks and stock exchanges. Pretty amazing what's happening. So the aim of integrating with Medico's network is to offer global sub-custody banking parlance for when an institution contracts another custodian to hold assets for it. Sawyer said in an interview with Coindesk, that's Zodia Custody CEO Julian Sawyer. Uh, here's a quote. I think of this as the third generation of crypto custody, where mu multiple custodians are linked together, he said. For example, a client in Brazil who is a custodian may want to store some assets in the UK, and they're not currently in the UK, so they could use us as their sub-custodian and use our regulatory permissions, etc. I think the multiple networks that are out there are really key in terms of linking custodians together and linking custodians to exchanges and venues in a compliant manner. So folks, see the global connection here, everything running on the blockchain rails. Incredible, incredible. It makes me so bullish. Uh, folks, I often talk about this. I got it in 2016. Couldn't imagine big companies like this getting involved. They all want crypto. They're all going to custody it. Many are going to offer crypto trading, staking, much more, all the bells and whistles. It's all coming. Finally, I want to end it here with some interesting news being reported by Bloomberg now. Here's a headline. Brooklyn's crypto hipster hotspot gears up for an NFT rebound. So Brooklyn, of course, is a borough in New York City. I grew up in New York. I lived in Brooklyn at one point. 
Uh, they said here Williamsburg, which is one of the popular neighborhood in, in uh, Brooklyn. I used to hang out there a lot, uh, is home to a Bitcoin powered bathhouse NFT mural. So you may say, so, Tony, who, who the hell cares about this news? Okay, as always, I break it down for you guys. Folks, part of the S curve adoption uh, of a technology, of a movement, you name it, right? Part of that adoption is integration into pop culture and society. I see this as incredibly bullish. You have a hotspot in a Brooklyn, in a you know hip neighborhood and things like that, that is crypto focused. Think about that. That means there's demand for it. There's people who are part of the crypto investment crowd and the movement and NFTs and much more. That is part of the S-curve adoption. Right. I, I've often talked about it. It'll appear in TV shows and in marketing and in lingo. And when you step back and you look at it from that standpoint and you look at all these different factors, it what contributes to the adoption, the growth of the asset or technology and taking us to higher highs and, and folks, because this is a financial network or networks, because there's multiple blockchains, a lot of capital coming in. And it's not just Brooklyn or the United States. It's the entire globe. You can be in any part of the world, somewhere in Australia, if you're listening right now, somewhere in India, if you're listening to this or watching this, you have an internet connection, you have a smartphone, you can buy a, simply a hundred bucks in Bitcoin, a hundred bucks in Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, whatever it is. And you would be part of the network. And many of these coins, of course, uh, they have hard cap supplies. So you have a supply and demand impact there to the prices, and you have a real-time uh, view of the network and what's happening, the transactions, and how many coins, and how many coins are locked up, and how many are released, and how many are being burned. Never been anything like that in the history of the world with a global, global distribution, global view. You and I can look at the same blockchain data right now. It doesn't matter what part of the world. You could be in Antarctica, and let's say you have Elon Starlink, right? And you're on the internet, and you're watching this. You and I can tap into the same blockchain, folks, and see, verify that the, what's happening on that blockchain. And we can have trust in it because of the blockchain's network and nodes and its decentralization and much more, right? The more participants, Metcalf's law, the stronger that network becomes, the more valuable it becomes. And of course, the native tokens on those blockchains become stronger. I hope you guys get what I'm trying to say here, because when that clicked for me, then I was like, oh my gosh, I see what's happening here. This is the future. This is the next layer on top of the internet and how we're going to transact with each other, how businesses will be run, how governments will be run. Because the, blockchain is going to be adopted by governments. We see they're building their CBDCs on it, right? Eventually, your driver's license, voting, all that stuff will be on the blockchain. It's amazing what's coming. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow or next year. It's going to take time. But we see the ball is rolling here, folks. It's snowballing. It's getting bigger and bigger and crypto is popping up everywhere. So I look for things like this in addition to other factors as to, to a gauge of where are we in the cycle and how's the adoption going because that would impact the price, right? Anyway, folks, what do you think about this news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating. Folks, please sign up for my free email newsletter linked in the description. Please follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, links in the description. Those follows don't cost you anything, but it supports the podcast. So thank you for watching and listening. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you all later.